Hey guys, Red Eyes here, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 9 of Hermitcraft. So yeah, uh, this week it's mostly about potions, and uh, the first half is building a brewing stand, or a brewing station, like an automatic one. And the uh, second half is figuring out what to do with it in the nether, and then some other little things in the nether. But yeah, I hope you like the episode. A little bit different than normal, because I'm trying to get them out quicker. Uh, no music for me this week, although there is a little bit of Kevin McLeod music in there. And yeah, I want to save my new song for a building montage thing, which I'll do probably when I build the Wither Farm. But yeah, as usual, shortcuts in the description, so enjoy! Alright, so I put together this potion brewing stand here, and uh, since I've done it, I've realized I overcomplicated the redstone by using extra repeaters in the timing system, which were unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is build the next one over here and uh, explain how it all works at the same time and do the simplified version. So, uh, just in case you don't know how these things work, you have your brewing stand there and you have to feed the water bottles into the side and your ingredients into the top using a hopper uh, for everything already. So currently, if you don't provide any power anywhere, what will happen is you uh, put in a water bottle and it will actually flow all the way through and it will end up uh, down here somewhere. So to prevent that from happening, what you have to do is power the output of the um, brewing stand there, uh, which is the hopper below it, and you can do that just using a torch. So now when I put water bottles in, because this block is powered, this uh, hopper won't allow anything to go through, so the bottles accumulate in the um, brewing stand. So uh, if I put some fire resistance potions in here, just so you can see a color difference of what's happening, and I hit the input, you'll see that uh, one bottle goes away, but you know, the other ones are still there, and if I look in here, it's actually the two water bottles that have stayed, and my fire resistance has flowed all the way to the bottom, and there will be one stuck in here as well. So to prevent that from happening, what I have to do is power the water bottle input while the brewing stand is emptying out uh, the current potions that are in there. So I'll put another salt block there, and another torch, so now, when stuff is being released, because this block is unpowered, this torch will be on, thus powering that uh, dropper, and, you know, stuff won't be able to flow through. So let's stick some water bottles in there, put some fire resist in here, and check that, yeah, water bottles, and now when I hit it, you see it all empties out, and then it comes in. So, that is good, and the next part is to get the ingredients in in order. So I will put a torch there. So again, when I hit the button, this torch will come on, and you can hear it click there. Uh, and it only clicked once, which is what you want. You don't want it to be clicking twice. If I put redstone dust there, it would probably click twice, because out here... Yeah, never likes to go uh, go on top there. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah. Okay, I forgot what I was saying, but... You know, I want power to come into the hopper there. And I want a little bit of delay before the next ingredient is selected. Like so. Another half block there, and then I will use a solid block. And I'll do a, a similar thing on the other side here, just so it looks balanced, and yeah, so that ingredient will get dispensed, have a bit of delay, then the next ingredient will get dispensed, and then a bit more delay, and then the third one will. So, put cobble, wood, and then a nether brick in there, you'll see, if I check that hopper there, there's nothing in it. But then when I hit the button um, and check the dropper, I have my cobble, wood, and nether brick in order. 
So, you know, not much to see up here. There's just two repeaters doing their thing. Uh, but that should always output in the same order. And because the hoppers are going right into the... Or because the droppers are going right into the hopper, then it shouldn't make any noise either. So that's pretty cool. And that is the basic setup, I guess. So whenever I hit a button, it should brew a potion if everything is all stocked up. Uh, but I don't want to be coming here to hit a button every time. So what I want to do is hook this up to a clock eventually. And the only danger with that is that it will continue producing things while it is full. So to prevent that from happening, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'll just do it on this nether brick here. But I will measure when this chest is overflowing. And the way I will do that is using this hopper here. So that's why there's two hoppers below the uh, brewing stand. It's so I can measure when the chest is full up. Now maybe I could do that using the one directly below the brewing stand. Um, but... Uh, I don't know, I think it causes problems because this gets power and... Uh, it's just easier going out the side there. So, uh, what I'll do temporarily is provide power to the hopper above here. And I'll put three... Or I'll put two bottles in there. So when it gets up to three, that will be considered overflowing. So at two, the output of this thing... Ooh, if I take the right output there, it's one, two, three, four, five, six... Six long. Okay, and then when I put in the third item, it goes up to seven. Now, of course, with potions, this is the same as a stack of cobble or something like that. You know, a non-stackable item. Uh, but anyways, oh, actually, I think what I'll do instead is when this is up to two, then it will be considered full. And that means I can compact everything. All right, so I got it figured out here. Uh, yeah, the input, basically, is now going to be over here, normally. Uh, having the input from the clock. So when I hit that, uh, this torch will go off, allow this one to come on, and then that will send power into the uh, brewing system. But when this uh, hopper here has two items in it, then this repeater will power, and... Just show you that again, take it out, that repeater isn't powered. Put it in, that's powered. So now when I hit this button, this torch won't actually come on. And yeah, so that's the overflow prevention. But if I'll take the temporary power I had there out, now the system should be allowed to run normally. So I will... Uh, stock it up and try it out. Okay, so I have uh, put my nether wart, um, magma cream and redstone in there. Now normally you'd have water oops, water just above here, above this hopper, and then you can throw the buckets in, or throw the bottles in and they'll get filled up and end up here. Currently this chest is empty, but there should be some water bottles in there and in fact I just need another water bottle to make this work properly so stick that in there uh, check all the systems empty it should be yeah and in the uh, dropper up there oh there's stuff in there yeah gotta watch out for that and in there there should be three empty water bottles because they automatically go in there uh, you know, if you just put them in. So, now I'll hit the input. The water bottles should have emptied out and some new ones flow in. And I got my nether wart there and waiting in line, I have my magma cream and my redstone. So that is very cool. And just temporarily, I won't allow stuff to flow into this chest here and down into the hoppers. I will block it in here just to see if the override is working. And the one thing about this is it does not empty the potions automatically once they have brewed. 
and it doesn't tell you when they've brewed as well. So you have to time it, allowing enough time for the whole brewing process to take place. Uh, if I had a master clock there sending in a, a pulse, it would have to be a pulse every... I don't know how long it takes to make a, a three-part potion or with three ingredients, but you know, you just figure that out and then it would only receive a pulse every so long. Now these have brewed. Uh, check I have enough water bottles up here. Okay, yeah, enough water bottles waiting to go. Have my fire resist in there waiting. So then it receives the next pulse. And now it's happening. Ah. Okay, the override was too quick. It didn't allow everything to flow out. So I'll quickly empty that out. Just not to waste any stuff. And I guess this override needs a bit of delay. So this is good testing. I'll just, oops, I'll just put these back in here. And try again, make sure there's enough water bottles. So now hit the input again. And, oh yeah, nothing's gonna happen because the override is on. So I have to uh, fill that, uh, or empty that. Ooh, what's going on? Yeah, fire resist in there. Nothing important in there. And should have water up here. Okay. Hit the button. And it looked like it properly emptied. Yeah, got three water bottles in there. There's probably a, oh, not even a potion in there. And in here I should have my three fire resists. And now you can see the override has activated. So now I can hit this button all I want and uh, it won't do anything until I've emptied out enough potions uh, from down here. And I have two outputs for two carts, so emptying it should be fairly quick. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I think that's a better design than this one over here with all these repeaters and stuff. So uh, this is the design I will be using here. Oh, and actually before we go, what we'll do is we'll send a minecart through and see where it stops. And uh, what happens with these minecarts when you send them through the nether, they go everywhere except for where you want them to go. <laughs> so we'll go through here and hopefully it will be on the right side. Yeah, this is the side I want it to come out on. And uh, you can hear the bell outside there winding up. So I'm going to have to take a quick break, because it goes a bit mad for a while. And uh, we'll light that up, go th or actually I'll send a cart through and see what happens. Uh, on this left side. Okay, so you go in there. I go in the right, I don't know if that makes any difference. And, oh yeah, so it came up here, not on the rails. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't know, that didn't quite work because it came out in the portal. It should come out of the rails directly. Okay, maybe... Um. Hmm. All right, so after uh, a whole bunch of messing around, I found out that the carts, uh, in my situation at least, like to come out on the southeast in the overworld. So they come out of the portal and land there. And then in the nether, they like to come out in the northeast, which is over here. So northeast, so they come out in that corner there. Which is kind of annoying, because I wanted them to come out of the other side, but uh, I guess that's how it is. And anyways, I was planning now to show you my fire-resistant 
potion or fire splash potion set up here. And uh, there's a lot of crazy redstone there. Well, not that much, actually. Uh, and what happens is the fire potions come in here in a cart. And some of them get sent directly to one side to a dropper there. But then the other ones pass through a brewing stand here, uh, which is full of gunpowder. So you can brew more uh, splash potions. And the reason I did that was because I thought you couldn't detect uh, or separate a cart that was full of potions, right? Because they are non-stackable items. So a um, item detector or item separator wouldn't work on them. But what I realized is that in the cart with all the potions that get sent to the nether, I can actually add in another block in the cart. So say I have a uh, storage mine cart here, and I want to have a bunch of potions going through. Uh, I'll imagine this sand is potions. So in order to detect these, what I need to do is add a different type of block, and then just detect that type of block. And that could be replaced even, so it would never actually run out in the chest. So I would have all my potions there, and then a certain type of block. So then I can actually detect what potion is being sent through. And that really changes the possibilities of what I can do in here. Basically, I can just have a wall with every potion, and I may as well do that. And also, I would prefer to do all my brewing in one place. So even though the gunpowder could last for quite a while in there, uh, I don't actually want to have it in there. I'd rather all have it together somewhere else. So long story short, uh, this potion idea could become quite a big project. <laughs> but anyways, what I want to do now is set up a small trap because while I've been here working on this thing, uh, I get tons of magma cubes just sitting out here. And they're trying to get towards me, you know, I'm over there. And uh, they just hop along there. And I realized that with the hoppers, it's very easy to make a trap. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do now. It'll take about two seconds to set up. And let's see. I'm going to use cactus to kill them. And then hopefully their items will fall uh, into the droppers. Oh, what? No! Oh, uh, all right. What? Oh, it's because it's next to the fence. Man, I was scared there. I thought, uh, I thought you weren't allowed to place cactus in the nether for some reason. And that would really not make any sense. I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to. So I'll just add a bit more floor down here, and I'm doing all this floor in solid uh, cobble anywhere where there's lava below, just so I know uh, what's down there. And I think I'll just put one there and one there, and I don't have enough hoppers to cover everything at the moment, but let's see, I just want to fill in the floor a little bit here and stick down some cactus. <laughs> that's terrible. I need more hoppers. Alright, so that's a little bit better. Uh, all these hoppers here, they all feed into that chest. Cactus here. And uh, yeah, obviously you could coat the whole floor in hoppers if you want to, I guess. But I think that'll probably do. I imagine they'll jump into there and die, and then their stuff will just fall here, or whatever. We'll see how it works. I think I'll just spend some time trying to get another Wither Skull, and uh, some might spawn then, and we can watch it in action. Whoops! Uh, guess that fire potion ran out. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is taking a while. I don't seem to be getting many spawns, so I'm guessing some of the other guys online are uh, are in the nether, possibly. So I'll try it with a blaze instead. 
Uh, yeah, that's good. I'll just chuck that on the ground because I didn't want that pick anyways. <laughs> Uh, okay. You come through here. Okay? Come on. Oh, too slow. Oh. I'm gonna run into these cactus and die, I know it. <laughs> Alright, I don't know how to get pig- uh, pigman. What are they called? Blazers to follow you. I got a lob and arrow at his feet. That might help. <laughs> wow, that was- a double. That was good. That was like playing darts, you know. Proper shot. Let's see if I can get the third one. No. Come on. Come on, Blaze. Oh. <laughs> so close. I think I'll speed things up a bit. There we go. So, oh, okay, anything in the chest? No. Oh, I'm not gonna get a blaze rod anyway. Yeah. You have to kill them yourself to get the blaze rod. God, yeah, I didn't want that sword either. <laughs> okay, well, we'll uh, check this out some other time. So for anyone thinking this kind of setup would make a good cactus farm, yeah, you could be right. But it would probably be the most expensive cactus farm ever. So uh, I'd stick to staying in the overworld with water. Anyways. Ooh, got some XP at least. <laughs> uh, okay. Alright, so it looks like I'm going to be building a lot more of these potion stands around here. To send into the nether. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how much room I'm going to have for a storage room down here in the end, so that might have to get moved somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I hope you like the episode and all the bells in it. <laughs> I just happen to be recording on the hour a lot, and, uh, the bells go sort of twice every hour, or twice on the hour, and it's because if you're a farmer in the fields, then you can hear it a little bit better. You know, if you missed it the first time, and you listen the second time, and you can count properly. Um, but yeah, for next episode, I want to go to the spawn Mushroom Island uh, games thing, because I've already set up a game there, and I would like to set up another one as well. And uh, yeah, I really got to think about giving people some presents. You know, I got the face up there. I got, well, this is from the same people, DMAC on host Zoom and Josh, who did the face. Uh, I got one from Jenny. Oh, this thing here. Don't know what that is. Uh, I'll open that soon enough. And uh, another one of the Pixel Nerds came by, Jonah Gee, and he uh, took all my cobble. But he left me two blocks of diamond, and I was giving him the cobble. You know, I didn't really want any payment. I'm happy to help out. So I would like to uh, pay them back somehow for this excessive. A uh, gift, really. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, and that reminds me. Thank you very much, whoever suggested putting the wheat up there. Sounds like a really good idea uh, to put around the egg farm here. Cover all this all in wheat, then it'll be sort of yellow and straw-like. So I'll probably do that as well. Mm, I'm about to die, so I think I'm going to stop recording now and uh, say goodbye and I hope you liked the episode um, what I'm trying to do is release them more quickly so that means you know I can't finish all the projects I'm starting uh, but I guess that way you get to see the progression of the projects as well hopefully but yeah I just want to be putting out more videos really and uh, getting more into it but anyways um, I'm going back to the nether see you later Thanks for watching, bye.